could you tell us a little bit about like the overlap between autism and PTSD and whether Mm -hmm. it's different for an autistic person or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting. Older studies used to think that autistic people experience PTSD at like a similar rate to Mm non-autistic people. But thankfully there's some emergent research, some newer research that is looking at it. Now it's hard. If if you see my infographics, you'll notice that the prevalence rates are like huge gaps. So like I have an infographic on trauma and autism and it's 32 to 60% of autistic people yeah. report PTSD. Yeah. That's a huge gap. And it's because it's from two different studies mm-hmm. and every study is going to have a different sample. So it's, of course, it's hard to get a really accurate mm-hmm. capturing of it. But what we are seeing is that autistic people are more prone to develop PTSD. So we experience it at much higher rates. For reference, about 4%, maybe 4.5% of the general population experiences PTSD. So even if it's that more conservative number of 30, that Mm. is still like a huge increased risk of PTSD. It's like low population, but a large amount of the Mm -hmm. the PTSD diagnoses are still going to that one. Well, it's not 1%, but the minority of autistic people. Mm -hmm. Or just are, if you took any one individual autistic person, their risk of developing PTSD would be, um, I, I mean, this is an estimate, but like tenfold the risk or, or, yes, or yeah. potentially higher. Yeah. There's different theories and I have some of my own theories. You mentioned earlier having a really good memory. I do too. A lot of autistic people have really good autobiographical memory. So if you think about a traumatic event, we might encode it with more intensity, especially if we have Mm. hypersensitivities, the sensory experience of the trauma is, is going to be encoded with more intensity. So that's one of the theories as to why we might be more prone to PTSD. Another one is we have, so I've, I've done, I have a series on this, the neurodivergent nervous system, but we just, we have more reactive nervous systems. What that means is So we have, everyone has like a window of tolerance and that's how much can I take in? How much stressors can I take in both from internal and from my environment and stay within a regulated window of tolerance? Still function, do do Mm -hmm. everyday activities. Still function, exactly. Autistic people tend to have a more narrow window. So, So do ADHD, window of tolerance, meaning we more easily flip into a stress state. So that's either hypermobility, so fight or flight, stress response, or hypomobility, like that freeze state. So we're more likely to flip into one of those two stress states more easily. So it takes less for us to get into our stress response. And I think that is probably a pretty significant contributor to why we're more prone to develop PTSD after trauma is our nervous systems are going to have a harder time regulating and recovering afterward. Yeah. And we have I, higher rates of victimization. So those are kind of the the factors. And there's more, but those are the big ones. That's that's interesting about like the more likely to freeze, more likely to mm-hmm. hypermobility, hypermobility, as you as you said. Mobility, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Or I might be confusing words there because it mobilizes us for action hyperreactivity or hyporeactivity. Yes, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So I was thinking yeah. joints like, <laughs> like Yeah, I, I think I was because it mobilizes us for action or we kind of freeze. Mm-hmm. I was combining concepts there, which my ADHD brain does all oh, the time. No. no, no, I do that as well. It's how you think of new things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And create new words. Yeah. hmm But um in terms of the hyper reactivity or under reactivity would you say that that because autistic people, you know, we tend to get into one of two states when we get stressed. We either mm-hmm. shut down or mm-hmm. we melt down. And what yes, one is same idea. Very yep. introverted, sort of internal mm-hmm. shutting down mm-hmm. of functioning, freezing. Mm-hmm. The other very, very erratic, all over the place, lots of mm-hmm. emotions, lots of physical movements and would you would you say that those those are kind of like the a good ways of of thinking about that sort of hyperactivity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thing? yeah, 
It's it's the same concept exactly of either shutting down or going into stress states. And there, there's some research that suggests autistic people may be more, not necessarily more likely to do one or the other, but more likely than non-autistic people to go into the shutdown mode. Mm. So there's a study of autistic children who had their blood drawn and they measured cortisol throughout the day before the blood draw, during the blood draw, after they did d- different measures of cortisol. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they found, no surprise, autistic children had more cortisol, higher peaks. They um, excreted cortisol for longer and it took mm-hmm. them longer to get back to their baseline. But what they yeah. also found is that some of those children who were having big cortisol spikes, they weren't showing hyperreactive behavior. They looked calm, meaning they were entering more of that shutdown stress state. Mm. So this is what um, I get this language from Finn Gradden, who's a fantastic autistic advocate, faux regulation, that this is faux regulation. You look regulated to the outside world, but actually mm. your body's in a very stressed state, but it's that shutdown. So you, so you look calm. You look very regulated, but you're not. Your body's in a stress state, and that that seems to be more common for autistic people. I love to, I love to that word. Do that. I love that word. Isn't it a great word? Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. it's it is true. I I kind of feel in like a constant state of like I've got restless legs all the time. Mm-hmm. Not like restless mm-hmm. leg syndrome, but it's like a mild like that. I always feel sort of. I always felt like my like there's ants crawling on my bones, or there's like, or or something related to energy or s- something like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that most of the time, and it, I, I like that way because I I think you know hiding, especially when you've when you've had like anxiety for a long time, it's like hiding that anxiety so well, even though. You know, I could be like on the scale of one to a hundred, I could be like a mm-hmm. 60, mm-hmm. 70 most of the day. But as soon as I mm-hmm. flip into that 80 and above, then, then that's when it becomes like the fight or yep. flight, the shutdown or meltdown. Yep. yep. And for the rest of the day, I kind of just, even, even sometimes I appear to myself that I'm regulated. I'm just normal because that's what I'm mm-hmm. used to. Mm-hmm. Cortisol. <laughs> I've done a lot of also research. Also, obese Cortis- cortisol and the amygdala. If we could just <laughs> put it aside, I I, yeah. I hate that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I always, I always. That's how I explain it to people. I say, well, "I'm okay. My cortisol is just very high." <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm okay. My, I love that. That's a great way. <laughs> Because it's a way of saying I'm not okay, but I'm okay. Like I'm I'm okay not being okay. Like I'm yeah. like my body's having this experience and I can tolerate it. Yeah, I, f- I find oh, I it very that. useful to to use like names for things that cause mm-hmm. things because mm-hmm. if you say that I feel anxious, um, some people mm-hmm. they don't really take that on board. They're saying that oh you feel anxious, it's like okay. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah. if you say my cortisol is raised a lot and, you know, cortisol mm-hmm. is like the thing that, that sort of f- makes you, mm-hmm. sort of your brain activates the body, it, yep, activates absolutely. Your body makes you go up and you get too much of it and you get over, overstimulated and you're hyper aware of everything. People find it a lot easier to, to grasp that there's this molecule mm-hmm. in my body causing yeah. me to act yeah. or feel like this yeah. rather than me just saying, I feel like this. <laughs> 